All right, we're going to talk a little bit here about the star sequence. So I have worked with a number of coaches who talked about the start sequence. And one of the things that they want to do is they want to have their crews shorten their stroke. Now, obviously, when we do a uh, start, we're going to be shortening the stroke. We're not going to do full slide, full slide, full slide, full slide to start. That would be like starting your car in fourth gear. That's just going to, you're going to stall out. Or in the case of being in a boat, you're going to put so much pressure on your backs that it's effectively going to blow them out. Okay, they're not going to be able to take that kind of load. And over time, it's going to wear it down until finally something gives, whether that be something muscular or something structural. Who knows? It, but something is going to give. So we do need to shorten that stroke. And we do that by shortening the slide to half, half, three quarter full or some sort of variation of that. But as I say, I have worked with a number of coaches that say they want people to shorten their stroke by not doing the layback, by cutting off the layback. This is something that they are obviously allowed to think. I think it is wrong. I never, ever, ever tell people to shorten the layback. Now, the, why is this? And the reason is, is because, as I like to say, good rowing is always good rowing. So when we think about the legs beginning the, the drive, the next progression is the layback, and then finally it's the arms, because we're using the muscles in the sequence that they are best designed to take the load. That being the lower body muscles are able to take a heavy load and push that boat away, the core muscles of the, of the torso are then able to build off of that and continue propelling the boat as they lay back. And then finally, we draw that handle to the body. And again, I, I like to say draw because, again, I don't like thinking of it as pulling with the arms. I like thinking of it as drawing it using these upper back and shoulder muscles, not the top shoulder muscles here, but the lats, the traps, etc., to draw the shoulder back through the torso and almost around the spine. By virtue of doing that and engaging these big, larger muscles, you're going to have the arm bend and it's going to draw it to the body. You are, of course, going to be using some of the uh, bicep in there. You're going to be pulling with the arms to some extent. That's going to be inevitable. But we don't want to think of it as a pull. We want to think of it more as a draw. We're drawing the handle to the body by utilizing these larger muscle groups. So why do we not want to cut off the layback? <clears throat> Quite simply, it's because that's our second largest propulsion group. So if we see something like this, and we're going to look at this crew here. Uh, and this is a lightweight eight from Woodbridge, it looks like. It's from 10 years ago, and again, I'm not doing this to call anybody out. Any mistakes that people make, they're mistakes that a million rowers have made, myself included. Uh, it's just something that happens, right? It's part of the learning process, uh, and we will we all sort of work through it to try and get through it, right? We all try to get better as time goes on. But we want to note what is holding us back, because the more we um, we limit how we're applying pressure, the more benefit we're just throwing to another crew, and we never want to do that. We're doing all the work. We're putting in that effort. We're putting in that in that energy. We want to get that energy investment return. We want to move that boat as effectively as possible. So we're going to look at 5C here, and we're just going to watch them start. We're going to hit pause, we're going to bring it up, and we're going to hit some clip. So they're going to do a start here. And we can see that he's rowing without much layback. A number of these people are rowing without too much layback. There we go. So we'll stop here. And we're going to come to about here, I think. So when we go through this stroke and we see them take the drive, number one, there's a lot of body opening right there, but then he gets to basically straight up and down. Right? So he's done a lot of this movement right here without engaging the legs. We're not really focusing on that. That's neither here nor there, but it's something to pay attention to. Now, as the legs engage, he moves here. There's not a lot of layback, but the hands draw to the body. Okay. So what effectively happens is we take our largest muscle group, and we're going to assume that his legs were effective through this drive. 
push, push, push with those legs. And now these muscles here, these core muscles, they are ready to go. This is off the start. This is where we want to build that speed and propulsion of the boat as quickly and effectively as possible to get up to that race pace where we can start, um, I don't want to say lengthening it out to our, to our, um, to our race pace, race stroke, but basically where we can get into the rhythm that we really want to hold through the race. Okay. Now he's putting that weight on the arms. Boom. It goes straight from the arms. This body that is dying to get involved. Okay. It's got a lot of energy and it wants to use it, but nope, we're going to forgo that. And we're just going to put it all of a sudden onto the upper body, these smaller muscles of the upper back and some biceps. And those muscles cannot handle that load. They, they have a hard time holding that load through the regular stroke because they're the smallest, weakest muscle group we have. If we have the heaviest load possible, example from the start when the boat is at a dead stop. Sorry, there's a lot of noise outside. I hope, uh, I hope this isn't too distracting. But if we then forego this and we move right to the smaller muscle group, these guys cannot handle it. I don't mean these guys, I mean these muscles cannot handle that load. It's just too heavy. So that's why we want to make sure that we shorten our stroke. But when we shorten our stroke, we want to do it at the top end, only through the slide. So we'll do a half slide, a half slide, a three quarter fold, gradually building up. But I maintain that we never want to cut back on the layback. People always do it because number one, they think it's going to let them drive the rate up a little quicker. It's going to let them be more effective in getting that boat up to boats up to uh, race speed. I disagree. I think it will not. <clears throat> I think we are trading something for the illusion of speed, and that is by pushing the rate. Because, yeah, we'll be able to get the rate up maybe a little bit quicker, but it's going to be just illusionary speed. It's not real speed that we're getting. We're going to feel like we're doing a lot, but we're not. So. We need to be patient in that stroke, in those strokes off the start. We need to take that full, complete um, process of legs, lay back, draw. So for example, to show this in action, we're going to come here to the semifinal of the uh, Olympics from 2012. And we're going to do the men's singles here. We're going to come to the start of, this is obviously the semifinals. So here we go. And we're going to watch and we're going to, See when that light goes green, I'm going to stop it. Here we go. So now we're going to maximize this again. We're going to make it big. And we're going to look at all these guys. Now these here are for the most part not the top um, top scullers that we will see. But when they start going, look here. We see big layback. We see good layback here. Okay, we see pretty good layback here. As these guys come through, we see layback. We see layback. Croatia, we see layback here from India. So, so we see at the top level here at the Olympics, right off that first stroke, we're seeing, look at this, big layback, layback, right? Layback. We come back it up here, we see layback. We come through here, we see layback. And not insignificant layback. And if we were to go to some point further in the race, we would see that it's pretty close to what people are doing throughout the actual process of the race. They're not shortening their stroke through the back end, through the release and the layback. <clears throat> They're shortening their stroke through the top end. Now we're going to come to the next race here. We're going to see this next game. Okay. So we'll bring it forward to where they're just about to start. And again, we're going to watch for the green light if it kicks up. Here we go. Boom. Now we're going to just advance it. As these guys come through, we're going to see, look, big layback, big layback, layback, layback. Right? We see a lot of people with decent amount of layback here. Because that is a powerful part of the stroke. That's your second largest muscle group. You do not want to nerf that. Okay. And it often drove me insane when I would work with coaches who would say shorten that stroke. Okay. We're here again. 
Now, this here is, we're starting to get two bigger name guys here, right? We've got uh, Marcel Hacker, we've got Olaf Tukta, we've got Mahi Drysdale, we've got August Krasconis. We've got bigger name guys here from back in 2012. Let's start. We're going to watch for that light. Okay. So here we go. Right off the start, we're going to see. Look here, layback. Boom. Right there. Layback. Here we go through. Layback. Layback. <clears throat> layback. A little less layback, but um, he is somebody who I think was actually a bit of a disappointment. Technically, I think he was um, deficient, I'll say. But we see these guys going right off the start with that layback. Okay? They may have a shorter stroke in that they're not as compressed. We look at his legs here, right? He's not getting full compression here, but that's okay because he's just getting that boat moving. He is in that car. He's going from first gear to second gear to third gear to fourth gear, and then finally he's up to highway speed. That's where we can shorten it. We can shorten it by shortening the legs and the slide distance because that is not going to cause undue stress. Okay? If we were to take a full stroke from dead stop, the amount of strain that would be on that back to hold that body position and to brace against that weight is just going to be so much that we're going to be inviting injury. So we're going to go up to the next uh, to the next group here, and we're going to watch them take off. Okay, so we're going to watch these guys. And this is what I look for. I tend to look for patterns and trends. We don't want to look for one or two strokes because sometimes you will be with people and they'll take video of uh, somebody doing one or two strokes and then they go and they analyze that and they say, okay, here's where you're deficient, here's where your problems are. I'm not a big fan of that. I like getting 30-second clips because some, anybody can have a crappy stroke or a crappy pair of strokes. So you want to look for trends. You want to see what is this person doing on a regular basis. And likewise, I'm looking what are people at a top level doing on a – on an overall basis as a trend. If one or two people are outliers, that's fine. They can still be very, very fast. There's individuals of, of all sorts, and sometimes people will um, be successful with something that I feel is not a great uh, technical point. So for example, we can look at, and I'm gonna trash talk Mahi Drysdale here, who is you know, inarguably one of the better scholars of all time. He's got a tremendous number of wins under his belt, including two Olympic gold medals. Yet you look at his blade depth. His blade depth historically is too deep, right? He is successful in spite of that rather than because of that. Uh, and it's something that if other people make a habit of doing, they're not going to be very successful with it because they just don't have his physical and mental capabilities to overcome that deficiency. Now, having said that, we're going to see, look at this layback here, look at this layback here, look at this layback here, layback here. We see all these people, layback. So when we get to the top level, a bit of layback, not so much from China, but a lot of layback. Okay, look at Great Britain. Look at the amount of layback that he's got here. Okay, and that I believe is Tim Maines, who at this time had one of the, uh, I think it was the, was it the Olympic record? It might have been the Olympic record. Anyway, I'm not going to go looking for it. Okay, so we can see that these people, while shortening their strokes at the top end, are not, see here, we look at Azerbaijan, we can see, again, he's not full compression, but he is full layback, okay? We want to come to the women's rowing heats. Okay, so now we're coming to sweep, and we're going to women. We watch the... U.S. women, so they've already hit the green light. I've paused it here. We're going to go through, and this is when the women, uh, the U.S. women were a juggernaut. They moved through the start. Now, again, they're pretty small because it's far away, but look at here. Australia, boom, they got layback. We look at the U.S. women, layback, okay? Big time layback. Netherlands always rose a little more upright, so they're going to be not quite as long. We look at Canada, we've got some people here with some pretty significant layback. We've got a lot of different stuff, so they're not super in sync here. 
although they did end up being here um, coming second in this race. That's a spoiler alert for a uh, butt rolled race. Okay, we've got Romania. We've got people with good layback here, right? Look at this layback. Then we've got Great Britain here. They tend to row a little more upright as well off the start, but still, we come here. Look at this layback here, layback here, layback here, right? So we still have them keeping the layback. So we see it in both sculling and in sweep. The layback remains at the top levels. So when we are telling our crews how do we want to get going fast, I suggest we never shorten that layback. We only shorten the top end. Go to half slide, do it two or three times, who cares, whatever. But keep that layback. That's your second biggest muscle group. And it's a propulsive unit that you do not want to lose. Okay. We come here, we're going to watch this here. Rowing start, Olympic champion Amy, okay, from 12 years ago. We're going to bring this up. So there they are. They're all sitting at the catch. And we're going to watch this and look at the layback. We're going to pull it back down and watch for the layback. Here we go, right off the start. Boom, they start going, bang, lay back, lay back. Look at these guys, lay back, right off the start. Okay, They are big, strong dudes, and they are making sure that they utilize those big, strong muscle groups. This is what we want to see off the start. But as I say, you'll see a lot of, a lot of things like this where it says, you can row two. Now, this is, um, they're specifically, I'll say, talking about rowing machines here, but this is not something that is uncommon that I've heard from other coaches. You'll start with short half slide strokes, then gradually lengthen them on both ends, adding more layback at the finish and compression of the end of the catch. I think this is bad advice. Okay? I think you're encouraging injury on the back because the load is going to be very heavy, and you're also going to be slowing down your boat because you're negating and you're ignoring that second largest muscle group. So we want to make sure that we are utilizing it, okay? And we only have so much uh, so much ATP. This is just sort of a side note as well, okay? People tend to panic or rush. I should rush is probably better. Um, but I don't mean rushing up the slide. I just mean they try to rush through the process of the stroke off the start because it's a high adrenaline area. Really excited, you're amped up, you're ready to go, and as soon as they say go, then people just explode out. Okay, but it needs to be calmer, it needs to be more relaxed, more effective. But people tend to think, okay, we gotta go, 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 right, and rush through the process, and that's one of the reasons that they try to shorten it up because they want to hit those 50 rates. But the reality is, is that muscle cells burn off the ATP they have floating around in about three seconds. Okay, and the phosphagen system kicks in and supplies energy for eight to ten seconds. So we've basically got that ten seconds of free power that people call it. It's not really free power, but basically um, explosive, instantaneous energy that we have. Okay, so people think, okay, we gotta really crank it up for these this 10 seconds or this 20 seconds where we can pound it out. But the reality is, is if we were to go back and look at this men's single skull, we watch the first 10 seconds of this race and we count sort of how many strokes they do. It's not a tremendous amount. Okay. It's not a tremendous amount. So here we go. If we're going to just watch this, boom, there, there they go. Four, five, six, seven, and boom. Seven strokes. That they're at their 10 second mark right now. So they're looking at seven strokes at the highest level. Okay. That is not going to make or break your race. And when we're talking about people, especially I'll say uh, sub elite individuals, there's nothing wrong with being sub elite. That's what the vast majority of racing and rowing is done at. If we go out so crazy that we're trying to perform like this, and we're trying to cut that stroke short because we want to get that rate up, we're just killing ourselves. It's far better to just stay relaxed, take it in quotes slow, um, and really 
actually complete the process of that stroke. Feel the leg drive, feel that blade back, feel the draw to the body. Then get up, take the next one. Let your opponent spaz out at the start and spin their wheels. Okay? They're basically popping the clutch, hitting the gas, and sitting there spinning the wheels. You can just dig the blades in, bury them solidly, apply the power effectively, and move that boat. It's going to be a far more effective start for you. It's going to be far easier on their bodies, and we're going to get a way better return on that energy investment. We're going to get a lot of propulsive power, and the boat is going to be calmer. So as we move into that race pace and move up to full slide, it's going to be a more relaxed, enjoyable environment where people are going to be able to maintain that focus. The crew will be able to have more unity, uh, and lots of good things are going to come out of that. So that's my thoughts on um, layback through the release when it comes to good rowing is always good rowing. Hopefully this was somewhat helpful.